Hello and welcome to Xinhua Live. I'm Yu Yue with Xinhua News Agency. I'm reporting from German northern city of Hanover. The 2090 Hanover Mass, the world's largest industry trade fair, comes to its last day. This year's fair, for the first time, features a 5G tax bed, and I'm now just in the 5G arena. You can see it's still very busy today, and a forum is being held there. And the use of the 5G is the hot topic during the past five days. Although some of the uh, related technology are still experimental, a couple of concrete showcases are already presented in real operation here, which can let people get closer to the 5G. And today, we are going to have you to take a look. First of all, we are very glad to invite Mr. Hotwalk, project leader of the 5G Arena, to tell us some of the background. Hi. 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 How do you decide to set up such a kind of 5G Arena? The topic 5G in the industry is a very main topic and we as the trade fair organizer of Hannover Messe, we saw a very huge potential in this technical area, in this new technical stuff. And so we decided in January to set up this 5G arena um, and to give our exhibitors the chance to show what they are doing um, in their uh, laboratories uh, and how they can implement 5G in their systems. Like here, this is an um, engine from Festo. Festo is a very popular and very international company based in Germany. And this is a measurement for um, uh, air pressure in the system. And with 5G, you have uh, you can use the, the um, uh, real-time data transmission to find mistakes and damages in the whole uh, production system. So how many companies are representing here their operation and who set up the network here? In total, in our 5G arena, we have 22 uh, exhibitors, companies, they want to position this in this field. And uh, nine of them, we call them hot, hot because they use, uh, they have... Um, they have machines and showcases. They are working with a real test field um, we implemented here in the hall. So people are quite curious about 5G. What can 5G do? Is that something different before than before? Yes, this is really. We have so much traffic on the buses here in the last days for Hannover Messe. And so we felt quite right that we um, are on the right way, that we have uh, set up this topic here in the in the arena and there are a lot of talks uh, at the booths from the exhibitors so um, I think we are quite right uh, with the feeling that um, 5G is a main topic for the industry because um, interesting is everybody in the world is talking about 5G and everybody is waiting for the, the latest mobile phones uh, some company the, the, the first 5G mobile phones will come to the market in summer perhaps but this is not the main topic, I think, for 5G. The usage from 5G in the industry is quite bigger because you can use all the advantages from 5G. Low latency, um, real-time data transmission, um, uh, low energy, um, low cost, uh, and all these um, things are so interesting, interesting for the industry especially, not for the mobile phones. So it's, in other words, it can play more function and more meaningful for the industry. Yes, of course. Here we are going to a, a robot uh, from Zeiss. It's also a, a company based in Germany. Um, and there you can see what it kind of advantages 5G is bringing with it. Um, you can, the, the, the robot arm will use the um, transmission from the sensor on the top to the base station with 5G and so you can transmit a lot of data volume in real time and this is our two advantages and you do not need cable anymore. Yeah. Okay, and I know there are also a lot of presentations, forums here and yes. experts from all over the world just share their ideas. So what kind of exchanges that you think during the five days have achieved? I, I think the, the main experience or another main experience from the 5G arena is that you have to work together in this technical field. Uh, some companies are working together and the, the uh, engineers learned a lot as they implemented the, the system together with our technical experts from Qualcomm and from Nokia to bring, it, bring the machines in the system. And I think this is the only way to um, get advanced technology if you work together, if you make collaboration um, uh, across the industries and across the borders.
Okay, thank you for introduction. Yes. Now we are going to the booth of size, and uh, it's an upper optical component and a measurement equipment uh, provider. And here we can see a model of wireless factory is working here. Hi, so would you please introduce us how the fabric is working in this kind of smart model? Hi, nice to meet you. Yes, um, here in this use case, we use uh, 5G to connect our measurement system. Um, we have a sensor here that is um, connected to 5G and we measure quality data on our car body part. So the sensor takes uh, pictures and creates a 3D image. So we have a point cloud of the surface and this data is then pre-processed. And in our use case, we use 5G to um, send the data to the whole network. And then we receive the data through the Nokia network here and can view it on our terminal. So we have live pro um, quality data from a production line and get it through 5G. So before you are here, when you are in the factory, what do you use to connect the machines? Um, normally we use uh, standard cable connections, but in the future we would really like to use um, a standard like 5G um, to get a lot more flexible um, with the robots. So besides flexibility, is there any other advantage by using the 5G networking? Yeah, there are um, lots of um, advantages if you um, compare it, for example, to a, a classical Wi-Fi connection. Um, a Wi-Fi can have a long latency spikes, so it takes um, sometimes lots of uh, milliseconds before we get an answer. Um, our system is normally used um, in a production line, so we only have a very small time frame to measure each, each part completely. We do 100% inspection, and um, if it takes too long, for example, through a Wi-Fi connection to get an answer from our system that the measurements are created, then we would lose points and the customer wouldn't have 100% quality inspection. So 5G enables us um, to bring our technology yeah, in a future um, industrial environment. Okay, thank you for your introduction, thank you. Okay, let's move on. Okay, if you are just joining us, we are reporting from the 2090 Hanover Mesa. It is first, for the first time, set up a 5G arena. And then, then we come to Bush, a drive and a control company. Hi, you can see there is a robot here. Hi, is there anything special with the 5G networking here? Yeah, I mean, like at the moment, uh, this robot, it is uh, connected wirelessly. I mean, this is more about the emergency stop of the machine in the f factory. So it means like some person, if he is like sitting next to the robot and there is some emergency or life threatening, someone can stop it and the production stops immediately. So it means like you are saving, it is a mission critical application. So this is, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so it's going on, I mean, someone can. So it's quite? It's quite fast, like 30 milliseconds. So it's uh, very fast. And like uh, this one, it is having a 5G chip and connected to the infrastructure, Nokia infrastructure, and like the connection comes to the other end. And there is also a 5G chip here. So it's uh, like 30 millisecond uh, speed. So this is one of the 5G use case. So before using 5G, what did you use in your factory? Uh, this kind, uh, it was with the cable. Okay. So, because you cannot use this with Wi-Fi, you cannot depend on Wi-Fi because there is a lot of interference. So, you need your own spectrum, you need your own uh, dedicated network and quality of service. So, you need 5G. Yeah. So, the 5G give you a more stable? More stable, more reliable and more secure, more safety. 5G gives uh, everything for this kind of uh, emergency applications. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Welcome. Okay, let's move on. Okay, if you are just joining us, we are live broadcast from the 2090 Hanover Mesa, and we are now in the 5G arena. Okay, now let's go to the bush of Weichwagen, a German-based automaker, and here you can see a combination of artificial intelligence and the 5G networking. And we may start maybe from here. I see there is a VR experience. Hi. So what Hi. are we? Are you showing here? Uh, we are showing the uh, visualization uh, of the uh, Volkswagen T1 
Uh, this is a Boolean. We do the pre-visualization. That means the stuff that the client can experience um, when he would like to order a product. He can configure it um, the way. I can choose the color I like. You, you can choose the color you like. You can say with or without panorama surface, for example. And then, when we are finished, we can also do that on augmented reality. Just give me a second. It needs to track the surface, and then we can um, use the product here. We, you can place it in your own home, for example. If it's working, if you like it, you can check for your lights or if you want to have different kind of lights. And then we also can go inside the car if we want to. And when we have configured the complete product, we can go on to the order process. Now these kind of my, of my personal product is getting forwarded to the production plant. And now on this production plant or production facility, these, my device or my product is now getting produced. And I think now the next thing is that the colleagues explain a little bit from Volkswagen about the production belt here and the setup. So now let's we have the technician from Volkswagen to get tell us what is this mini assembly line showing to us. Yeah, sure. What you can see is a model of the car factory of Volkswagen. And like you configured the car right now, it is written on this chip, there's a memory on it. And this chip can read by these sensors. And so if we put the card, it shows the, mod, uh, the body shop of the car factory. And so uh, we assemble both parts together. And all of these parts are built by trainees at Volkswagen. All of these red parts are printed with a 3D printer. So they read the data, the sensor read the data. Yeah, exactly. So the sensor read the data and now because we configured a car without that special roof, it used the normal roof. Yeah. So in the big screen they are also showing what step is doing now. Well, it's kind of a visualization. It shows in life where the, where the car is right now. And you, you can always see if, if the engine of the belt conveyor starts, you can see how, how much uh, acceleration it does. So. After it, both of the parts will come together with laser soldering. This laser soldering, we have a feeder in this, in this um, robot, and it's, simula it's a simulation, of course. In real, we would have a laser which is strong enough to melt metal, and the laser material, so the solder basically, it will get through a feeder and this needs a special uh, speed to get a good quality of the line. And for that we can use for example a 5G model in here um, that makes the quality really reasonable. Next step is the cathodic dip painting. It's the ground layer of a coating. So primer is the official name for that. We dip the whole body of the car into a special fluid and through high voltage the the particles stuck on the on the body. And this is how it works here. Of course again a model we don't have really liquid on here. What is kind of special in this station is what you can see here because over there we have vibration sensors and these vibration sensors detect if there are untypical vibrations and then this light will light up, the blue light. So if I tap here, the blue light goes on. So for predictive maintenance, we could change this part if it gets broken too fast. So it's also a collaboration between humans and the machines. For example, exactly, yeah. So this is the paint shop we have chosen the red color before so I hope we will get a red car now yeah you 
can just take this car with us. Okay, let's go to the next stop. I guess it would be good to skip this part because we have this now, right this, and go to the mating. Okay. The mating is where we, where we put the top of a car together with the roofs. I will show it to you. Here we have 5G again, so a sensor will realize when the car makes an entrance in this part of the factory. And a second sensor will realize when it gone off of the belt conveyor again. And for that, uh, we can build a virtual reality of the factory, for example. So we can do kind of a shadowing and compare the mathematic model with the real model. And for that, 5G is really good, of course, because of the low latency, because of the high bandwidth we can use. So now you can see on the screen how fast it was this time and compare to the mathematic model. The next step is the cleaning of the car and the quality control. For that, again, the, the RFID tag was written and in the end we have the lights for the quality control. The company finalized is, is using a KI in this so um, some artificial intelligence and I don't know, maybe can, you can talk to them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Okay, now let's move on. Well, next maybe we'll go to the Nokia. They are showing a factory in a box here. Okay, hi. Hello. So, what is Nokia representing here? Can you give us an introduction? Maybe our camera will yes. take a look. And uh, my name is Robert Fuller. I'm from Nokia, and we are showcasing here a solution about a transportable, modular, flexible um, factory environment. So, this is connect connected to our private LTE solution called Not NDAC, so Nokia Digital Automation Cloud. So it is more or less a uh, setup how you can imagine um, the setup of the future manufacturing lines. So we have additive manufacturing line uh, here with the 3D printer. We have uh, post-processing after 3D printing. We have uh, the um, curing unit, also a uh, uh, small warehousing which is connected with RFID and the assembly line behind there. So. Uh, the showcase behind or the concept behind is to bring it here to the and secure interface to a secure environment um, which is our automation cloud and all the uh, machines are connected to this uh, private LTE network. Okay, so uh, it's kind of a moving factory that can meet different demands, right? Exactly. So um, this is currently a concept. It is not a product. Uh, it is on our solution what we will sell as uh, Nokia. So we sell the infrastructure behind there and discuss uh, or showcase uh, the um, industry, how they can set up their future um, environment in the factory and um, how easy it is to switch from the Wi-Fi area to the private LTE area. I know that Nokia as a telecom infrastructure provider also one of the company who set up the uh, 5G networking in the 5G arena. So what do you think about the setup and do you think the collaboration between different companies is very important in the age of 5G? Yes, exactly. So um, this is definitely the case. So um, you need here uh, the collaboration uh, of different companies also um, to use the ecosystem in a an, in an, uh, broad area. So this is also a an, an part of Industry 4.0 that there is a collaboration between many companies um, to realize and to set up such a um, big um, effect to the, to the audience like here showcased in the 5G arena. So otherwise it would not be possible um, to have such a um, high standard to showcase. Okay, thank you so much. You're thank you. Bye. Well, just as the slogan says that 5G is on, inspiring the future. Although the MESA will conclude later this afternoon, the pursuit for a more intelligent and more collaborative future will never stop.
So it's time to say goodbye. Thank you for watching us. See you next time.